Hi, I wanted to go over a couple of questions from the 2014 AP Calculus AB exam that I found a lot of people having some difficulty on. And the first one was part 1D. And my thought behind why you were confused about this is that you actually went to the solutions and looked at the scoring guidelines and you didn't understand this. Basically, if I saw this written on your paper, I knew you were confused because you weren't thinking through the problem. So if you don't mind, let's take a step back and do this together. It says that LAT is a linear approximation, and so that would be like coming up with our tangent line at t equals 30. So how do we come up with our tangent line? We know that we need a slope and we need a point. So a slope, we are finding the linear approximation to a, so that means we need to do a prime of 30, because again, approximation to a at t equals 30, and then we need a point, and our point is just going to be whatever a of 30 is. So now let's see what information we are actually given. They give us a of t. So to find a of 30, we just go ahead and put this in y1, and then I would do y1 of 30 by using the y bars feature. So I went ahead and just typed this equation into my y1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vars, go over to y vars, y1 of 30, and I get that 0.78 2928 and then since I have my calculator I'm going to go ahead and do math 8 which is n derivative d dx of y1 evaluated at again at 30. So boom that's that number there. So this is my slope and this is my point. So my slope was negative 0 0.055 nine seven six and my point was point seven eight two nine two eight and so to come up with the equation i know i have y minus y1 which is that point seven eight two nine two eight equals the slope which is negative zero point zero five five nine seven six x minus thirty so that's my equation that i would write see they wrote this which all they did was they scooted that um, a of 30 over on this side, and then they have, this is the slope, right? This is x minus x1. Oh, I guess we have uh, t's in this case, so I should have written a t instead of an x. And then basically this is my y1. So really, I wouldn't have ever written in that format. I usually write it like this. And then in order to predict the time at which there would be 0.5 pounds of grass clippings remaining, then you should go ahead and just let that L of t be equal to the point 0.5. So that's basically it. And then I would, of course, rewrite my L of t equation here because this is very informal. I have the y, but what is the y that represents the L of t? Equals negative 0.056 t minus 30 plus 0.783. And so then set that equal to 0.5 and you would get the time at which there are 0.5 pounds of grass clippings remaining. Number four, a lot of people struggled on this problem. For part A, it says find the average acceleration. So they give you velocity, so acceleration would just be the slope, right? We're taking the derivative of it. So we're gonna do V of eight minus V of two all over eight minus two. Then you would just use your table. So you have minus 120, minus 100 all over six and that simplifies to negative 110 over three, and our units are gonna be miles per minute squared because we have acceleration, so miles per minute per minute. And sorry, I meant meters, I don't know why I said miles. And then in part B, it says, do the data in the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is negative 100 meters per minute at some time t? So they're asking me something about velocity and velocity is given in my table. So they're asking me if velocity is my function here, they're asking me to tell something about the function itself. So that's my call that this is an intermediate value theorem type question versus a mean value theorem where you would be looking at its derivative. We're looking at the function given itself. In this case, it's velocity that's given. So if I can prove something's lower than negative 100 and something's higher than negative 100, then I know if the function's continuous, then I can use an intermediate value theorem. So remember, I can only use IVT if the function, which is velocity in this case, is continuous. And how do I show that? Well, I don't have just an equation, so I can't just say, oh, it's continuous. But you'll notice that it says that it's a differentiable function. So we know v of t is differentiable. That was given. Therefore, v of t must be continuous, right? Because differentiability, we were proving it by showing that f was uh, continuous and f prime was continuous. So that's a whole lot more requirements than just showing that it is continuous. For a function to be differentiable, it must first 
first be continuous. That is a prerequisite. So we got that covered. So we can actually use IVT. So let's look at the data points they give us, five and eight. So we know that V of five is equal to 40. We know that V of eight is equal to negative 120. So since negative 100 is between those two numbers, right? Negative 120 is less than negative 100, which is less than 40. So since that is true, by IVT, there must be a time between those five and eight minutes such that the velocity is equal to exactly negative 100 meters per minute. So that's how we do that problem there. And again, because velocity is the same function that we're given, that's our indicator. Let's use IVT to prove that something's below and something's above, so I must cross, right? On part C, at time two, the train's position is 300 meters east of origin station. So I have the station and then I have this train A that is 300 meters east of that station. And I know that the position at time two is equal to 300. And the train continues moving east, so it's going away from the station. So that's an indicator that the derivative would be positive if I needed that information. Write an expression involving an integral that gives the position of train A at t equals 12. They want us to find S of 12. Well, we're given S of 2, so that's our starting point. So we can start at S of 2 and then add up from 2 to 12 of v of t dt. If you need me to prove this once more, the reasoning is because you're given information about 2 and you want to find information about 12. So those are your bounds. And we know that the antiderivative of velocity is the position function. And that's between 2 and 12 in this case. So that equals s of 12 minus s of 2. So if we solve for s of 12, we would just scoot that s of 2 over on the side. And so we have this s of 12 is equal to s of 2 plus the integral, okay? So that's the proof. Um, you're probably getting the point. You don't have to like prove it every time to yourself anymore that this is how we do it. We do our starting point plus from our starting point to our ending point. The antiderivative of velocity brings us back to position. That's basically it. Now, we know that s of 2 is 300. And how do we evaluate the area under the curve? Well, it tells us here, use trapezoidal. So trapezoids are simply the delta x, which is 2, the delta x here would be 3, the delta x here would be another 3, the delta x here 4. So we do width times height, but to find the height in this one, we average the two. So the average, let me just write it up here, say t4, width times height. So the average between 0 and 100, and then I do my width, which is 3, and then I average the 100 and the 40 plus, then I do the width, which is 3, and then I average the 40 and the negative 120, so 40 minus 120, so that's going to be negative, that's okay, and then I average a negative 120 and the negative 150, and I multiply it by that width, which is 4. I'm not going to do all of that work out. Finally, they give you this second train B. It says it travels north from the origin station, so let me just draw a picture here. I had my first train A that was going this way. This was my origin station, and this was A and it was going east. And now I have one that's going north, that's B. This distance ended up being 300. And then it says, for this one, at t equals two, the train is 400 meters north, so that's 400. Now, what is my dx dt? How fast am I moving this way at time equals two? Let's look at our table. Does it tell us that? Yes, it says at time equals two, my velocity is 100. And since I'm going away from the origin, that's positive 100 because this distance is getting more and more positive over time. It's getting bigger, that number. This number is also getting bigger over time, right? So it's also going to be positive. So this dy dt, how am I going to figure that out? Well, they gave me an equation. They gave me v of b is this equation. So I'm going to do v of 2. So dy dt is actually going to be whatever when I put 2 into that is, and I end up getting 125. So again, I figured that out by doing vb of 2, and that ended up being 125. We have this side is 300, so that's my x. This side, my y, is 400, so what is this side here? Well, you know your 3, 4, 5 triangle, so your z would be 500. Then we have a right triangle, and we want to find this dz dt, so I'm obviously going to set up x squared plus y squared equals z squared, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. I can get rid of all those 
twos, and then just plug in for x, plug in 300, for dx dt, plug in 100, plus for y, plug in 400, for dy dt, plug in 125, equals z, which is 500, and then you're going to solve for dz dt, and that's how you do that problem. The final problem, a lot of people kind of skipped a step in this, and I think you didn't really understand what you were doing because they skipped a step in solving the solution. So we knew dy dx is 3 minus y cosine y. So people did a good job of separating the variables. 1 over 3 minus y dy equals cosine, oops, that was an x, cosine x dx. Okay, and then you have to take the antiderivative of both sides. But what is the antiderivative of this? Well, it's 1 over something, okay? And that whole something is an indication that I need a u sub. So they didn't write that out, which is why a lot of people missed part of this problem. So the u is actually this 3 minus y, meaning du is negative 1 times d y. We only have a dy, so we know that negative du is equal to my dy. So I need to substitute that in. I'm going to just do it informally on the side over here. So I'm doing the integral of 1 over u times negative du, that's what this is, right, equals negative integral of 1 over u du, which is negative, the antiderivative of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. So that's why the antiderivative of this is negative ln absolute value of 3 minus y equals the antiderivative of cosine is just sine x plus c. And so my next step would probably be to see if I can find the initial condition f of 0 equals 1. So see if I can use that to figure out what my c is. So f of 0 equals 1. So my y is 1. So I have negative ln 3 minus 1 equals sine 0 plus c. My sine is 0. Well, at the point 0, my y coordinate is 0. So that's 0 plus c. Negative ln 2 is equal to my c value. So now I'm down to negative ln 3 minus y equals sine c minus ln 2. So I'm going to just multiply 3 by the negative. So I have ln 3 minus y equals negative sine, and why'd that turn into a c? That was an x. Negative sine x plus ln 2. And then we can base e both sides. So I have absolute value of 3 minus y equals e to the negative sine x plus ln 2, which is e to the negative sine x times e to the ln 2, which is e to the ln 2 is just 2 e to the negative sine x. So since um, f of 0 equals 1, that's a positive value. The absolute value of 3 minus y is simply 3 minus y equals 2 e to the negative sine x, meaning y, I'm going to scoot that over here there, scoot this over here, equals 3 minus 2 e to the negative sine x. And that should be my final answer.